everyone. Welcome back to Salt and Burn This, a Supernatural Rewatch podcast. I'm Sammy. I'm Valerie. Welcome back. We are back. That's what everyone's saying now with uh, with theater, you know. Oh, yeah. We're back. We're back. We're back. All of the Broadway commercials on TV are also, you know, big, back. big celebrations of we're back. Yeah, yeah. It's That's what I always say when we call people back from breaks, you know. Right. We are back. You know, because people are like, are we back? I'm like, we are back. <laughs> I always end up having to like yell it and enunciate it, you know, like spread it out. Yes. You know, well, it, I, I hate to say it, but I've been kind of bummed out because of that whole, you know, accident on the, the movie set. Oh, my God. I know. It's terrible. It's-, it's terrible. It's one of those. I was like, oh, so many, so many people. I was like, I felt bad for Jensen because he was all excited about being on this movie shoot. I know. You know? I, it's I like mean, what I, his his once a month tweet was about, you yeah. know, like, hey, going to be in this Western. Super cool. Yep. And and he had just uh, at the Denver Con, I think, that he was at. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he talked about the armorer. He talked about working with this armorer. Oh, really? Uh-huh. And he mm-hmm. he was talking about how... You know, she asked him because she had never worked with him. She said, you know, are you familiar with guns? And he was like, well, you know, sort of. And so she walked him through step by step as if he were a beginner. Yeah. And he's like, okay, yeah, okay, I get it. And he was acting like he didn't know anything about guns. Mm -hmm. And then when she said, okay, you know, this is how we make sure it's safe, blah, blah, blah. I want you to, you know, fire at this target over here. And so Jensen did a Jensen thing where he like, he whipped out the gun. and was like, bam, you know, and then Mm -hmm. back into his you know, holster. And she looks at him and said, you know, you're an asshole, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and everyone's oh. like, ha ha ha. Because, you know, we all know that, you know, obviously he's trained in, in weaponry. Yeah. And he was just kind of being a, a jerk. Yeah. But, you know, he was talking about that armor. Yeah. Uh, and then literally like a week later, this happened. So I feel, I feel bad for, for him because I wanted him to have this experience. Mm-hmm. Obviously I'm, I'm horrified for, for her family and, you know, for their loss. Yeah. Um, I'm horrified for, um, Alec Baldwin, uh, Alec Baldwin. I mean, Oh my God, that's going to live with you forever. I mean, how does it not, you know, the director who put the, or the assistant director who put the gun in his hand. Yeah. You know, it's like all of those things. I mean, I mean, Accidents happen. I hit somebody. I hit somebody in the head with a window. You yeah, know? truly nobody's fault. Accidents happen. You know, no matter how careful you try <laughs> mm-hmm. to be, and and so with with that, it it also it rubbed me because I always get friction from directors mm-hmm. when I when I pull out my uh, let's be safe voice. Yeah, you know, and people yeah. are like, but they're just toy guns or they're just this and that. I'm like, no. We treat it like this. And and all the rules are exactly what everybody is saying. You never point a gun directly at somebody's body, no matter what. Mm-hmm. You know, you you never dry fire a gun, you mm-hmm. know. And, you know, all those things that I tell people in rehearsal anytime that we're working with firearms, yeah. I get a poo-poo from directors. Like, I'm right. wasting or their like, time. Yeah, or like rolled eyes. Like, oh, who cares? From from the singers. I yeah. get it all the time. Even this one guy who's supposed to he's got the most guns to handle in this Don Giovanni is the least experienced on stage and with weapons you know he I gave him the the pistol he's supposed to have and let's say this is the uh this is you know the the barrel Barrel. of the gun Mm -hmm. um I hand that to him and I said you know it's safe and he goes thanks he's like so did you hear about and he points the gun at me and he's like so we have to be really careful because you heard what happened on the movie set I was like you're pointing that at me I was like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. And I guess wow. it, yeah. So, so this whole thing is, it, it's making me a little raw. It's making me a little raw. And I don't mean to insert myself into it, but I'm like. No, you have every right to, because this, you deal with this while you're not the prop master. You are a part of the team that, that deals with passing on the prop to the person handling it. You know, the weapon, you know, be it whether it's a gun or a knife or something heavy and club like, (laughs) like (laughs) you know, Uh, no, you have every right to insert yourself because you think that what if that were me? Like, what if that had happened on my watch? 
Well, and what if I'd been put in that situation by somebody else? Right. You know, because there's always that pressure from someone above you Mm -hmm. to say, just do it. Yeah. You know, and if the director tells you to do it, then you do it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're supposed to be able to think for yourself, but the it's no the industry pressure. Yeah. It's it's easier said than done. Exactly. See what Eric Kripke said in response? Yes. No more. No more live guns. Yeah. He took a pledge and he was just like, nope. Yep. We'll just use VFX from now on. Yep. That's amazing. Cause I try to think of like, how would they have done supernatural? Yeah. Uh, that way. Yeah. I mean, they probably still could have. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I have no idea what the difference looks like. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what movies or shows use VFX versus. Right. Uh, I mean, blanks. Mm. And especially with now special effects are so. They're so I good. Mean, yeah. Yeah. We definitely. <laughs> there are whole it. movies made of special effects. <laughs> All right. We know people. It just looks like people. Yeah. <laughs> Season two, episode nine, Croatoan. In a small Oregon town, Sam is infected by a supernatural virus that sweeps friends and neighbors into a frenzy of violence. Written by John Chaban and directed by Robert Singer. Bobby. This episode could also have been summed up as, well, that escalated quickly. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. That's funny. I was trying to explain to Shannon, Miss Shannon of the podcast. Yes. Um, what episode we were recording today, and I couldn't remember the name Croatoan, and I kept saying Croatia, oh. Crouton, <laughs> Cro- and I couldn't do it. And I was like, that's exactly what Jensen went through trying to remember the name of, you know, the episode he was talking, he was talking about oh, really? on set. Yeah, and he's like, Cro- Croatia, Cro... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize it until I was trying to think of the name out of context and uh-huh. I couldn't, so I was like sorry Shannon I, I think we're recording a show about croutons I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> but after that I did come back and research Croatoan mm-hmm. and just the just the name alone I mean I remember um you have to know you have to know something about Croatoan they explain it like a, a little bit of it and then they add their supernatural mm-hmm. slant to Croatoan so I was like I'm just gonna look this up in the very beginning mm-hmm. and and start with it can I can I do that sure okay Croatoan, the story goes, when the colony's governor, and this would be the colony in Roanoke, when the colony's governor, John White, returned from a three-year journey back to England in 1590, all traces of the settlement he left and its inhabitants had disappeared. The only clue left behind was the word Croatoan, the former name of what is now Hatteras Island, carved into a post. And then the word Crow was carved into a a tree somewhere nearby. Mm-hmm. So those two things were left behind. Um, Croatoan is, is an Algonquian word, which means talk town or council town. So I'm not quite sure. I don't think it had anything to do with the Algonquian words. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and then I looked up that in the Bible, Croatoan also means um, uh, that can't be right. <laughs> I may have looked up it something means that about can't super- be right. <laughs> no, no, now that I'm reading it, I'm like, I don't think this was in the Bible. <laughs> now that I read it, because I, oh, Valerie. What did you um, write? What did you say? You said, a disease that drives people into homicidal madness and leads to cannibalism. I don't think that's in the Bible. <laughs> Check your sources, Valerie. Check your sources. <laughs> Oh, this com- this actually comes from the episode that we can actually talk about uh, when we get to it. But okay. I just want to do that. The history, it is a real thing. Croatoan is a real, like, mystery that happened in yeah. history. Mm-hmm. That A mystery in history. Uh, that a town, basically, a settlement disappeared. But the disappearance is only from the eyes of the man who was gone for three years. So... I don't know if it's a mystery or not. You know, he left for three years and came back and there was nobody there. They could have just said, you know, as a settlement, it's not working. We're leaving, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, or they could have been wiped out 
by other settlers or by, uh, you know, Native Americans or by disease, mm-hmm. you know, so, so, and how much investigation actually went on. <laughs> right. So, but it is a mystery. It is a mystery of there used to be a settlement and now there's no settlement there. Yeah. So, well, I think that it was most, it's mostly assumed that they went to go to the Croatoan Islands to go live because I think the guy, what's his name? John yeah. White. John White. Yeah. He, it's assumed again, there's not a lot of written records really about what he did, but it's assumed that he maybe went to go and try to find them on the islands. Oh, okay. but the weather, there's something happened with the weather that he couldn't make it there. So then he just came back and it's just like, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been on a boat for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I so, it, we, yeah, no. it, it is a mystery. And yeah. Kripke basically was like, oh, I, first I was enthralled. I was like, oh, this is a ghost story. And then later learned like all of these, oh, they probably just left or maybe they went to go <laughs> live with, you know, a native tribe somewhere and uh, right. use themselves in that culture or they were wiped out by them or disease. Right. Uh, it is weird that there's no trace. There were no traces of anybody. You know, it's not like there were dead bodies lying around. Right. But, but Robert, I mean, Sin- Robert years, Singer right? is convinced that it was witches. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting that he didn't bring that up in this episode. Though. I know. Right. Okay. So speaking of the episode, some quick keys of the recap. So, oh, you know, yes. that we can predict what the episode is going to be about. It's all about Sam's visions, yep. uh, yellow eyes talking to dad about yep. particularly about Sammy dad mentioning Sammy's secret to Dean wow. and Sam drilling into Dean's uh, as of late erraticness during his hunting. Right. Which is kind of right. killing willy nilly without any. Right. Out of control. No yeah. filter. Yeah, so I wonder what this is going to be about. Right. <laughs> so it opens up the the opening, uh, the cold opening is a visiony type of uh, sequence because it's not smooth motion; it's kind of slow motion, a little herky jerky at the same time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's an image of uh, of Dean loading and reloading a gun, like checking the bullets in the magazine, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then you know, and he has a determined look on his face. He opens the door. And uh, we see uh, a someone, a, a boy, like a 20-ish year old boy tied to a chair and he's crying and he's saying, it's not in me. It's not in me. And and Dean is like, I still have to kill you. And then he he very deliberately aims the gun at the boy. Mm-hmm. And when I say boy, the I guess the young man. <laughs> he's a guy. <laughs> he's a guy. Um, and we see like him start to pull the trigger and then we hear a bang. Mm-hmm. It does this. Uh, it does the vision, the out of vision sequence, which is like the little like, flashes like flash. and moving around. Yeah, yeah. And Sam wakes up on the floor, and Dean walks into the motel room, out, just coming from a food run. And sees <laughs> Sam on and the beer. floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like Sam's like throwing himself out of bed. You know, clearly mm-hmm. having these these night this nightmare vision. I know they weren't in the same motel room, but the red bedspread and the red uh, lamps and stuff, I was like, that's the exact same room, the exact same decoration that they used in um, Roadhouse Blues, not Roadhouse Blues. Mm-hmm. Crossroad Blues. <laughs> Crossroad Blues, the, the the doctor lady, when she locked herself in the uh, motel room, oh. and all of her, it's like all yeah, the same the set dressing. Room, yeah. Yes, the sexy room. And I want to point out that Jared still has his hand. I in know. I saw that too. I mean, throughout the episode, I know like when I broke my arm, granted it had to be surgically repaired and not cast repaired, Uh but I had my arm in a sling slash wrap. I don't know, two weeks, maybe. Really? Cause that's going to take six weeks for bones to heal. See, that's what I thought. But when Daria broke her arm three weeks, it was in a cast. Huh? Like, I was shocked. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I remember as a kid when someone broke their bones. Yeah, everyone had their cast on for six weeks. Forever. So wow. maybe maybe there's been strides in bone healing since 2006 up to 
a few years ago, whenever she she broke her arm, you know, but <laughs> right. we heal faster nowadays. Maybe. So tidal splash. Now, do you remember when we first jumped into this new season? I was like, oh, my gosh, new tidal splash. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I didn't notice the, you know, the, uh, the pentagram and the A. You mm-hmm. know what else I didn't notice? Because I randomly because uh, I often when we do this, when we watch it and take notes, I'll press pause so I can take notes, right. you know, so I don't miss anything. So I press pause and I took my notes and I looked up at the title screen where I had it paused. Mm-hmm. There's a mouth. Oh, really? In in the red flames that come shooting out at the screen uh-huh. before that before it dissolves into the pentagram A, there is like it's like a dog's mouth. It's kind of like a like maybe a hellhound or something that's in the flames. Oh, interesting. And I tap and looked up and I was like. Is that? <laughs> is, that? is it before the words form on the screen or after yep. the words yep. form it's on the screen? It's the first, screen? it's the first splash before supernatural Ooh, comes up. I'll have to pause because it kind of splashes out. up and turns into <coughs> like flamey flames. Yeah. It just so happened that I hit pause mm-hmm. in that moment and looked up. Okay. Oh. So back from the title screen, the boys are in the car. They have their GPS on. They're on their way to <laughs> River Grove, Oregon. Because Sam saw pictures of Crater Lake. And that's how he knows it's Oregon and not some other River Grove. Yeah, they said they specifically said there's only two towns in the U.S. called River Grove. Are you sure it's in Oregon? Right. Yeah, because of this poster. They're both kind of talking through the vision. Sam has obviously already told Dean what it was. And OK, so run it through me again. What did I do? And <laughs> it's like, well, there's this kid tied to a chair. Everyone's begging for you not to kill him. And you still killed him. And Dean's like, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, there must have been a reason I killed him. Right. It seems like, yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have my doubts, especially yeah. given your your past behavior. I know. But but they do say like, well, your visions, you know, now we've established your visions always have something to do with yellow eyes. So right. there's got to be something going on with that. Right. Um, so they pull into this town and there's, you know, townspeople doing towns, townspeople-y things. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they uh, they stop their car and they happen to see this one guy uh, sitting on a, his front porch, like struggling with this <laughs> fishing rod. Yeah, it's like the actual rod. The reels come off of the rod. And then he's like his his line is all tangled. He's just kind of <laughs> just having a hard time with his. Yeah, with I guess his so. I know rod. nothing about fishing. I just I was like, oh, maybe he's just cleaning it or. Oh, no, re- that was reassembling it. I don't know. Definitely but. somebody who was not familiar with, with a fishing pole. I don't fish. <laughs> Probably okay. would have been me. <laughs> <laughs> but Sam's like, that guy was in my dream. That guy mm-hmm. was in, in the vision. Mm-hmm. So they, they go up to, to talk to him and they introduce themselves as, as an <laughs> alias. Um, U.S. Marshals. Is it Billy Gibbons and Frank Beard? Yes. I didn't have to look this up. I knew that the, that they were from ZZ Top. I, di- and- I didn't. When I looked up the name and saw the people, then I was, I was like, oh, that's a guy from ZZ Top. And in Bones. Bones. <laughs> yes, exactly. Plays uh, the dad. Um, what's her name? Uh, Angela. Angela's dad. Yes. yes. He's hysterical in there that role. But it was the funny thing about ZZ Top is a guy with the name Beard. Uh, Frank Beard is the only guy in the band without a beard. Yeah. <laughs> so a nice little ZZ Top shout out there. Thank you, Dean. Yes. yes. Um, but they're U.S. Marshals, so they say. So Sam asked this guy if he knows this somebody who looks like, you know, the he's in his kid 20s. In his yeah. yeah. Blonde hair. He's got a he's scar got a- mm-hmm, on his head. And this being a small town, the guy is very defensive. Like, why do you want to know? Right. And they just say, right. listen, nope, we just need to ask him some questions about somebody else. He didn't do anything wrong, but we think that he might but he know, may know something. Did. Yes. Yeah. They're being very smooth about this. I um, thought so. Particularly when Dean notices the guy's tattoo, where it's yes. that marine dog, the devil dog. Devil um, dog. Over, yep. knee, over the crossed rifles. Kind of connects with him, he, calling yeah, him Master like, Sergeant. Just looking for a Master Sergeant. You know, mm-hmm. my dad was in the Corps. Yeah. And uh, so they do the little military bonding. My brother uh, was a Master Sergeant. Oh, really? Um, yep. Just before I retired, he, he, uh, he was Master Sergeant, uh, served in Iraq, retired now. So I was like, yeah, Master Sergeant. Did he have that but- tattoo? No, he's no. uh he's um Army National Guard. He's, oh, okay. He's not, he's not a Marine. 
So yeah, Dean butters him up in that way. Just enough for uh, Sarge, as he's called for the rest of the episode, to say, yeah, the kid you're looking for, his name is Dwayne Tanner, and he lives up in Aspen Way. He's He gives up the information, but he's still a little reluctant about it. Yeah, you can see that he doesn't fully trust. Yeah. yeah. So Sam and Dean are start walking. I don't know if they're walking back to the car or walking know, they, they the walk. It's not very far that with where they go before Sam bumps into an electrical pole. Right. A <laughs> telephone pole that has it just just happens. <laughs> the the one post in town that has it carved on. <laughs> yeah. And it's the one that he bumps into. Yeah. Yeah. And my question is, okay, so he, he runs into this post. He sees, you know, that it says Croatoan carved mm-hmm. into it. But he automatically is like, huh, this is a mystery. He jumps into that as opposed to, hey, look what someone carved in here. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> people do stupid things. You know, teenagers carve words yeah. and people carve their names. And, you know, people always want to tag stuff. Right. You know, you know, so-and-so was here. I was like, why did he automatically jump to this is a mystery? Why would Crow the, he's to- a hunter. That's they always think everything is a mystery. Anytime everything. someone gets killed, they're just like, it is it a be. ghost? You know, <laughs> right? It just kind of cracked me up. Yeah, you it know. also cracked me up that Dean had no idea what he was talking about and <laughs> kept rattling off lessons from Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> he was trying to make it sound like he knew. Yeah, you know, and Sam's like, that's not school. <laughs> No, Croatoan, you know, the Roanoke colony that disappeared. But then, you know, Dean does jump in. He does click on. He's like, oh, that's right. That, you know, this town that everybody disappeared from. And the only thing left was this word, Croatoan, carved into something. And they're like, so do you think that your visions have something to do with people disappearing then? Right. That's also probably why he immediately jumped into mystery. He's like, okay, I had a a vision about somebody in this town. And here's this this. word about a mystery from 500 plus years ago. Um, Right. And uh, Dean, Dean's able to kind of connect the dots as well. He finds, you know, once he clicks in, he's like, well, what's the one thing that could make an entire town disappear? You know? Yeah. You know, a demon. And he yeah. goes right to, and you know, what's been connecting you to all these, you know, visions? It's the demon. So yeah. yellow eyes, yellow eyes. So yeah. like, man, we got to call for backup right now. Pull up, whip out their <laughs> cell phones. Not no working. Signal. Go, Go to, to the a pay phone. phone. <laughs> not working. <laughs> and Dean's like, well, yeah, that's the first thing I would do if I was going to kill an entire town. Is <laughs> right. Cut off communication. Good to know that Dean's always thinking on the bright side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So cut to, oh. they've made their way to Dwayne's house. Did you notice, I have to say, did the you hit horseshoe? pause? Yes. I didn't have to hit yes. pause. I just saw it. And I was like, oh, bad yes. luck. <laughs> bad luck and upside down horseshoe. Mm-hmm. It's like, they're not going to have a good time in this house. So this like teenager, not, not Dwayne, yeah. uh, opens the door. And the first thing I thought when I saw this kid was, I would never, this is the kind of kid I'd never want dating my daughter because <laughs> he was cute you know but he kind of had that like cocky smirk about yeah. him you know like he knows he can get away with stuff because he's you know good looking kid mm-hmm. and i was like Ugh. <laughs> if he if like if, if my daughter ever showed up like if i ever opened the door to him wanting to date my daughter i'd be like no <laughs> i don't have a daughter but but uh but yeah he says he's Dwayne's brother is Dwayne here no, he's on a fishing trip or something. Mm-hmm. Um, Are your parents home? And and Jake says, yeah, they're inside. Mm. And then one of the boys says, well, can you go get one of them? You know, maybe they know. Maybe we can ask them. And then dad comes by. Yeah. And he's like, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> Is he in trouble? Yes. He's like, yeah. oh, oh go- by golly, what's uh, what <laughs> seems to be the trouble? Yeah. Um, so. And he's like, oh, no, he's on a fishing trip. We're not quite sure when he's going to get back. And then the boys ask about, well, maybe your mom knows. Oh, she's not here. Mm, but Jake said oh, that she Jake was. Said, he said, said they're she inside. And oh, she's getting groceries. <laughs> Do you have a number we can call you when he comes home? Yes. Door closes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and both Sam and Dean are like, okay, that was 
a little too step, a little too Pollyanna, a little too perfect. Mm-hmm. So they they go creeping around the outside of the house, ducking down under windows to do some snooping. And they look in this one window and they see, I'm assuming the mom tied to a chair. She's hurt. She's crying. She's gagged. Mm-hmm. And the son, Jake, like takes a knife, cuts his own arm, and then is like dripping blood into her open wound. Mm -hmm. And then just as that's happening, Dean and Sam like burst in. Yeah, they're like, all right, that's enough. (laughs) Enough, enough, enough. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And uh, the dad like lunges at them and Dean just boom, 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 shoots him dead. Mm -hmm. And Jake turns around and like bashes through a window and goes running across the yard to escape. And Sam is, is there with the gun, but the kid's running away. So Sam doesn't shoot him, doesn't shoot him in the back. Yeah. And you can see that that uh, Dean is not happy. No, that 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 was a missed opportunity to stop the kid. Yeah, and uh, so they rescue the mom. Yeah, so they're back they in town. To- yeah, they bring her to a doctor's office. Doctor Lady, uh, I think it's Doctor Lee, but I was just Lee, calling her yeah. Doc the whole episode. Yeah, um, she's like, "Oh dear, what's going on?" Oh, Mrs. Tanner, oh, come back. Come to the back. Right. Everybody and, knows everybody in this town. Everybody is everybody's if, neighbor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, how big is this place? Right. <laughs> now, granted, I've lived in small towns like that before. Really? Uh, but but even then, it's still not everybody knows everybody. I find it interesting that I live in an apartment complex and I only know like maybe three or four people. Yeah. You know, my entire complex. So yeah. I can't imagine living in a town where you would know that many people. Oh my God, it's weird. And then shortly after Sam brings Mrs. Tanner into the back, then Dean comes barreling in with the a dead guy dad. over his shoulders. Yeah. Doc was like, what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm a marshal, would show you my badge, but got this guy over my shoulder. My neighbor, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, was he attacked too? No, he was the one doing the attacking. Doing the attacking, and then he's dead. Yes. He got himself dead. So then the the doctor is talking to the mom, like, you know, what what happened? She's like, they tied me up, they beat me. I don't know. They had the devil in them. Yeah, yeah, very pointed and, sentence. Yep. And Dean and Sam hear this. They're like, we're gonna step outside. For yeah, just yeah. A second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, cue knowing looks to each other. <laughs> yeah. So they step into the hall Mm -hmm. and they're like, aha, demons. Yeah. You know, but how is it? How could demons be possessing? Yeah. So many people. Were they they possessed? Is this mass possession? There were no signs of of a possession. You know, the ones we've seen before, like demon smoke. But something has turned them into monsters. And so Dean's like, well, our phones aren't working. So I got to go find help. Yeah, but this is also when he gets mad at Sam for, quote, oh, having for a not- bleeding heart, not shooting the kid, you know, whom Dean calls an it and Sam calls right. a kid, you know, the right. very differing opinions there. But Dean's shown this behavior before. I know, he goes know? back and forth between being black and white and, and... And then having a conscience. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not to say that he doesn't have a conscience, but there's sometimes when he's, he's so black and white that he can make a mistake. Right. Because he doesn't take the the time to think about it. But yeah. yeah. So every time we think he's like grown a little bit in his compassion and understanding Mm -hmm. because of what Sam, because of Sam's influence on him. Yeah. You know, he does this flip. Yeah. He's like falls back into old habits or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he goes off to find help in the next town, which is about 40 miles away. Yep. According to the doctor. I didn't even look. Did you look up the, if River Grove is a real place? It is a real place. Okay. It I is. It's about 20 up. miles outside of Portland, actually. Oh. I thought it was going to be much further away, but yeah, I it's know. Like 20 okay, miles. Okay. So they of lied that the closest town was 40 miles away. Yeah, no. Okay. Portland's right there. <laughs> <laughs> and it is populated, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So Dean, as he's trying to leave town, uh, comes across this like car that's broken down in the road mm-hmm. with a license plate that's WTF, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but this car, I mean, Dean gets out and he looks into this car. There's bullet holes. There's blood. There's a lot of blood. Yeah. There's smash windows. There's a baby car seat that's covered in blood. Yeah. 
and but then, no people. Uh, it's like no just people, blood. no bodies, There's, yeah. just blood. A giant knife on the ground outside the car. Yeah. Um, he gets back in the car and mm-hmm. drive off. And yeah. then we're back at the doctor's house, the house, <laughs> doctor's office. Mr. Tanner is laying there on the table. Doctor <laughs> is looking at the blood through a microscope, notices that, oh, his blood has a lot of, I didn't write it down, but the things that fight off a viral infection. Yeah. Um, but she hasn't ever seen a virus or known of a virus that could make someone act the way that these right. people are acting right. which is violent she's like some can cause dementia but i've never heard of this yeah. and also there's like weird things happening in the blood if i had known any better it looks like sulfur but that's weird i've never that's seen cool. that either <laughs> and sam is like sulfur oh. you say <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so further down the road we mm-hmm. find dean he's coming around this corner and he sees Cars parked in the road. There's guys with guns blocking the road. Mm-hmm. And um, Jake is there. That yeah. smirky ugh, is mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Um, so you know that this isn't just a roadblock. This is this is all bad. Yeah. There was a jump moment there where Sam is, Sam, uh, uh, Dean is just like looking at the, the blockade in front of him. Right. And then all of a sudden there's a hand slamming on the little the, the, the roof the, of the, the car. Roof of the car. <laughs> that did actually scare me. I yeah. wrote that down. I was like, it shouldn't have, but it did. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the guy's like leaning all chummy, like on the car and trying to get, you know, Dean to, to get out of the car so we can talk about it. You know, the sheriff or the somebody. Yeah, he's some being post. very short with his answers because Dean is yeah. like, all right, what's what's going on here? He's like, oh, quarantine. Yeah. For what? what the, for, yeah. I don't know. Something out there. Who, well, who how do you this? know? Yeah. Sheriff, he called. It's like, oh, really? He called? You know, where there's no phone signal, he called right. me. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you, I'd really like it if you got out of the car mm-hmm. so we could talk about yeah. this. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so Dean, I loved this sequence. I absolutely <laughs> adored the sequence. I did too. So Dean slams the car in reverse, slams on the gas mm-hmm. and just peels out with this guy still holding on to his driver's side window. Mm-hmm. And now the uh, the guys who are doing the blockade start shooting at Dean. Doesn't matter that this guy who's their guy is attached yeah. to the car. They don't yeah. care. Mm-mm. They're just like, bang, 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 bang. And then Dean, I call it flip a bitch, which I don't think is right. But he like <laughs> does a 180. He, he able, he's able to spin the car 180 degrees because he was going backwards. So he spins it. Now he's you know driving going forward, forward mm-hmm. all in one move, flings the guy off the, the side of the car and then goes like squealing down the road, yeah, the tires yeah. squealing. Yeah, it would. It looked like it was Jensen the whole way. Yeah, I'm not quite I'm not sure 100 percent if it was, but maybe. Maybe, Maybe I, he's a sexy driver. See, I don't care much about cars, about the no. make and model of cars or, you know, sports cars. Oh, that one's really cool. That one's not so cool. <laughs> I don't care you. about that. I do love me some sexy driving, though. Like Fast and Furious. I actually love those movies just because of the, <laughs> the driving, driving. People, the sexy driving. Yes. Uh, that one, like, stupid Nicolas Cage movie. Gone in 60 seconds. I love it just because of the driving. You know, that one's <laughs> mostly about like all these cool cars and these chasing right. all the like the rare things, but it's mostly about the driving that I'm like, oh, fun. You should, you should watch um, the Italian job. That was, that I know I should, I've been wanting driving. to watch that one. Yeah. And, and it's actually kind of a fun movie. So, yeah, but yeah, I just loved that sequence. I, I thought it was, it was rough and it was raw, you know, yeah. and it wasn't like, he wasn't smooth. He didn't do it all like super sexy smooth. It was just, he was in the moment. He did it, and he got away. Yeah, he's kind wow. of using the sport, the car, as it, it should be used. Yes, you know, do you know what I mean? Yes, it's like it, it, yes. it's this sexy sports car, you know, according to the world, and now he's actually using it like using it. a rough yes. and tumble sexy sports Arr. car. So back in the uh, the clinic, the doctor thinks that the mom may have been infected because of her open wound, and there and her describing, you know, that he dripped blood on her. That's that's how viruses are, you know, transmitted. Bread, yeah. yeah, or at least you know. this one, because um, it's blood, a bloodborne blood. virus. Um, yep. Sam is looking at Beverly, Mrs. Tanner, very suspiciously and kind of mm-hmm. in a in a watching mode, like this whole time, you know, the, the shifty eyes. Uh, <laughs> while she's like, "You think that I'm infected? I don't know. They had a disease and." Doctor's yep. like, you know, with your permission, I'd like to take a blood sample just to just to see. 
And then in a snap, Mrs. Tanner completely flips. You know, she yep. one minute second she's patting the doctor's hand, and then the next she's goes into full like, attack mode, like growling and jumping on her. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and the camera does this thing for whenever somebody is now turned. It's a it's a jerky and slow mo at the same time. Yeah. Which I was like, hey, now is it a vision or is it the infection? Oh. <laughs> because a part of me was like, oh, is is this really happening or is he envisioning this? There was a movie that I watched with the commentary. I think it was one or maybe both of the Anne Rice vampire movies, the interview with the vampire and Queen of the Damned, uh-huh. where they talk about they couldn't quite get the effect that they wanted because the vampires are supposed to have like the supernatural speed, you know, be super fast, you know, uh, undetected by a human eye, but they didn't quite ever get the effect of what they pictured in their heads Uh uh, due to probably money constraints and just visual effects wasn't quite there yet. I don't know. Um, I, I kind of felt like that's what happened here. Like almost, <laughs> maybe, not quite. Yeah, maybe they were trying to go for something. They didn't quite know what. Yeah. But it didn't quite work out visually as well. Because whenever I right. saw this, I was like, this is kind of like, it's weird. It's and, weird. Yeah, it doesn't fit with the overall atmosphere that they've established Yeah, um, in their filmmaking. Yeah. And I guess they were just supposed to visually uh, differentiate the people who were infected and turned versus the people who weren't I get it but it was still just uh, it was weird yeah um so anyway when Mrs. Tanner's attacking people she then (laughs) picks up a a sharp tool like a scissors or scalpel or something and goes straight for Sam like tries to like go for Sam and stab him he does knock her out just in time with a a With an fire oxygen tank. Oh, it's, an it's, oxygen a, tank. it's an oxygen tank. Yeah. Some, and something like, big and clang. heavy canister, canister. Yeah. He just full on knocks her out. I didn't realize that she had turned on Sam. Yeah, I, she I knocks she the was... doctor out and then takes one of the tools and then just goes straight goes, for Sam. Okay. So now Dean is on the way back uh, into town. And there's nobody, there's like nobody on there. There's no cars. There's no people on the Mm -hmm. sidewalks, Mm -hmm. nothing. Except suddenly (laughs) directly in front of him is Mm -hmm. the Sarge. Yeah. (laughs) Son of a bitch. You know, slams on the brakes because the Sarge is like pointing gun at him. Yeah. That this was one of the best exchanges. Yeah. (laughs) I loved this. (laughs) Dean goes, because Sarge is like, get out of the car. Mm-hmm. And Dean slowly goes to get out of the car and then pulls his own gun out. And they're now both pointing guns at each other. <laughs> and Dean's, and I, I did this word for word. Go ahead. Dean says, put it down. Sarge says, lower it now. And then Sarge says, are you one of them? Dean says, no, are you? Sarge says, no. Dean says, you could be lying. The, dar- the Sarge says, so could you. And Dean's like, all right, we could do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put our guns down before we kill each other. Yeah. Um, They still don't fully trust each other. Um, (laughs) Dean convinces the Sarge that there's no way out of town. You should just come with us. Come with me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So Sarge gets in the car and both Dean and the Sarge are still pointing their guns at each other while they're sitting in the car (laughs) next to each other. (laughs) And Dean's like, well, this is a, what did he say? This is going to be Uh, a relaxing drive. (laughs) It's going to be a relaxing drive. And as soon as he said that, I was like, now, is this better than the drive home with Ellen in the car right. after they, <laughs> you know, after no exit or, or is it worse? Which is worse, the gun or a silent Ellen? <laughs> you know, what? I totally would have thought that Ellen would have been the worst one. Oh, the guns, I, I, Dean understands. And you can deal with. <laughs> right? But a yeah. mad mother? Mm-mm. Nope. Yep. Yes. Back at the doctor. Yeah, so I didn't make a note of this character early on, but now I'm going to say something. Hmm. When they first came into the clinic, uh, Mm -hmm. there was uh, an assistant or a lab tech or something. You know, Mm -hmm. she's in her like nursey scrubs or whatever. I I don't like her now because because she was just like a character who was there. But Mm -hmm. now she's that person who's going to start to panic and throw things out of (laughs) whack. There's always that one person who has to rock the boat, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, And she's now that person. 
Yeah, She's that's what I wrote like, too. I was like, Pam, the nurse starts to do that panic thing. Yes. And trying to leave, you know, because it's the only, you know, like, oh my God, I got to get out. What we if we're all infected? Yeah. yeah. What if he's infected? What if we're infected? And then she's like, oh, I have to go find my boyfriend. He's yeah. out there. I'm like, so wait, you're afraid about being infected, but you're willing to run out into the street to go look for your boyfriend. <laughs> so I was like, damn it, Pam. Yeah. And Sam goes to try and dissuade her from leaving because he's sure that help is coming. And right on cue, the car rumble is outside. He's like, oh, there they are. We're saved. We're saved. Except (laughs) (laughs) Except it's Justine and now Sarge. Sam and Dean then just fill each other in. There's more crazies out there and they've got the town blocked in. But there's, there's no way out and we can't even call people, right? And Sam is like, well, we think it's a demonic virus since there's sulfur in the blood. Right. Which Plus, oh, I've been that reading a- in dad's journal. Oh, yes. Yes. Where yeah, that- dad thought that Croatoan was the name of a demon of plague and pestilence. So that explains why Sam is having visions about this town. So yellow right. eyes must have something to do with this Croatoan demon, if that right. is in fact what it is. But it also seems like these infected people are actively trying to infect other people through blood to blood contact, as noted as noted by the Tanner family. Yeah. And that Beverly was like intent on stabbing Sam. She wasn't trying to kill him. She was trying to cut him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Then they hear uh, Sarge Mm -hmm. call from the other room. Hey, there's one in here, meaning he just came across the mom who was only yeah. knocked out. Right. Yeah. He's like, you know, there she's, she's infected what, you know, we have to kill her because she's going to overpower us. Yes. Because he knows, because he mentioned earlier in this fun little standoff that they had, that he had a neighbor <laughs> named Mr. Mr. Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> you have a neighbor named Mr. Rogers. Not, Not anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> he came at me with a hatchet. I had to put him down. And he also gives out the information that Listen, the longer you wait, the stronger they get. The stronger they get, yes. Because my neighbor yes. was super strong. It was like near impossible to overpower him. So Dean goes into the room where the mom's been locked up. Mm-hmm. And uh, he and Sarge are standing in the doorway. Sam's standing behind him. And he's like, are you sure she's infected? Mm-hmm. And Sam reluctantly says yes. Yeah. And Dean is just like, okay, boom, boom, boom. Shoots her three times. Yeah. Even while no, she's sitting there crying and being like, no, Mark, you know me, uh, Sarge, you know me, you've known me all your life. They're the ones that were infected, you know, putting on a good show, especially to this guy who's like new to this whole picture, uh, <laughs> meaning Sarge. Um, Dean, though, without hesitation, without blinking. Yep. Was just like, all right, dead. Bam, bam, bam. Yep. Now, I thought, is, and I could be wrong, that the image of him firing that gun three times that to me looked like the, the image that they cut from uh, the vision. Yeah, from the vision. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought that was that was interesting. So later that night, uh, they're still trapped inside the clinic. Uh, Sarge is looking out the window. He kind of mm-hmm. sees the men townies gathering on street corners. Mm-hmm. That that can never be good. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could never be good. Um, but so they decide that they just they're going to have to leave. They're going to have to make a break for it and leave. Because they're just going to get overrun. Um, but Sarge is like, these people are hunters. They have mm-hmm. weapons that, you know, we would never make it through, you know, unless yeah. we had like explosives. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and through the Sam's turn, pensive yes. look, yes, <laughs> yes, we could make explosives. I went, I went to college. To college. <laughs> yeah. That plan starts. But then just, just as they decide that they need to make explosives, bang, bang, bang on the clinic door. Mm-hmm. And it's Dwayne back mm-hmm. from his fishing trip. Yes. Sarge lets him in, goes right to the door, yeah. lets him right in. I was like, yeah. what the, it's like, it's Dwayne. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And just like, <laughs> welcome to him. I was like, that's, that's not, that's not right. Yeah. That's not, that's not right. Um, we do this. But they kind of let him in. My first question was why did Dwayne come to the clinic? But then again, I realized everybody is everybody's neighbor. He was there looking for his neighbors because maybe they knew where his parents were. Yeah. So where's my mom and, and dad? I'm looking for my parents. And Dean looks at Sam and goes, awkward. Considering that Dean has just killed both of yeah. his parents. Yeah. 
<laughs> They're being very light about all this murder. <laughs> right? But it still made me laugh, though. That's the sad thing. Yeah. I, I was like, Valerie. That's, you know. Right, right. But then while Dwayne is you know, explaining about where he was and what he's encountered, you know, he's also encountered all these crazy people who have attacked him. They notice that his leg is bleeding. Gashed, yeah. And they're like, mm, tie him up. He's got to be contained. We don't know if he's infected because the yeah. doctor said, you know, the sulfur didn't show up in the blood until about three like hours. Three hours, yeah. Which is when they turn. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So they do, they tie him up. And then, uh, so Sarge is tying up uh, Dwayne. Dean and Sam have another sidebar. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, they have a thing where Sam is like, this is exactly how, this is the start of my vision. This is exactly how my vision is playing out. You cannot kill him. You don't know if he actually has it. And Dean's like, "Uh, yeah, we pretty much do. I mean, he's bleeding. He just came in from outside. He's definitely infected. I gotta go kill him. And Sam's like, you don't know for sure. We can just Just wait wait and see, wait wait and see. And he's and, like, nope, we have no choice. And yeah. Sam then just lets loose and is like, I, you know, I can't, you're not acting like yourself. You're acting like one of those things out there. You're just going to kill an innocent man whom you don't know is infected or not. And then Dean, in answer, turns around, locks Sam out of the room, you know, yeah. double, shoves doubly. Him. Yeah, shoves him out, shoves locks, him. locks the door, goes into yeah. the room where Dwayne is tied up. And locks that door as well, I yep. think. And I don't know. He, picks got, up he locks the, at he least just one door. Picks up with the vision. It's exactly what we saw. Yeah. We see him. He he does the whole eject his magazine, mm-hmm. the magazine back in the gun. So it's the whole, it totally picks right back up again with, with the vision. Yes. Where, Everything. Yeah. Where Dwayne is, uh, Dwayne. Dwayne, Dwayne. Is, <laughs> Dwayne is begging him not to kill him. He's like, no, it's not in me. I swear. I felt really bad for him because he was too. clearly terrified yeah being shot like an animal i think someone mentioned it earlier with beverly is like you can't just shoot her like an animal in the corner and that's what they're doing with this guy even his neighbors are kind of they're not stopping dean either they're like right they're just waiting and seeing i mean they're kind of like wait no maybe but that's it they're not stepping in they're not yeah even the doctor is like there's really no way of knowing for sure i cannot tell right now yeah, no one else is throwing up, you know, in front of Dean saying, no, 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 don't shoot him. Though. Yeah, yeah. They're no, kind no of one's like, willing to put themselves. They're like looking yeah. with like one eye open kind of, you know, the. Yeah. The, the, oh, oh, it's gonna yeah. Come. I mean, considering that he did just blow away. Beverly. Barb. Oh, I'm sorry. Beverly <laughs> Barb. I'll just throw some names out there. It could be Barb. Any. It's fine. Alas, Dean cannot bring himself to do it. He doesn't do it. So the next thing we see is uh, Sam and Dean are filling up you know, explosive liquids and mm-hmm. you're know, making like Molotov cocktail type things. Yeah. And there's like an, un- there's a, a silence between them. And then Sam's like, you know, I'm going to ask. Well, the doctor comes in first and she's like, it's been four hours. His blood is still clean. Is it all right if I untie him now? Right. Cool. So four hours has passed since this kid came in and they've been like making bombs and right. probably been silent. Then... Sam says, you know, I'm going to ask what, why didn't you shoot him? And Dean doesn't answer. No. Instead, he just says, I need more alcohol. Sam doesn't push it. He says, oh, okay. I, I think, you know, I think he knows his brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, he's not going to get, get an answer. doesn't mean he's not going to keep asking. Right. But he knows he's not going to get an answer in that moment. So Sam goes off to get more alcohol for the bombs and stupid assistant Pam <laughs> follows Sam into the room where there's more alcohol and, you know, basically says, you know, I've been waiting for this moment, you know, to be alone with you. Mm-hmm. And she has since locked the door behind her. There's a lot of door locking in this yeah. episode. Yeah. She's like, I I've been wanting to get, I needed, I've been from the beginning. She says, I've been trying to get alone with you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, to do this. And she like, leaps on him yeah it goes you know, into the crazy full monster mode. slow-mo yeah and i love this for as smart as sam is he doesn't tune into to that until she's like on his on face top and attacking of him. yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> you know? like, what could you possibly mean by you've been waiting for this yeah you know? i know and she she tackles him mm-hmm. and is um she like punches him and she's beating on him she takes a, a scalpel and slices his chest mm-hmm. and then she slices her own hand and like 
puts her hand smack on his chest and is like rubbing yeah. her blood into his wound. And that's when Dean bursts in and just shoots her dead in the back. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. There, yeah. There's no, it doesn't matter. It's her back. Nope. Boom, boom, boom. She's dead. Yeah. So then like her statement of I've been waiting this whole time to be alone with you. Then like after, cause I watched this episode like three times. Um, <laughs> In the beginning, when she has her first stupid panicky moment, she's like, oh, my God, we're all going to die, but I've got to go get my boyfriend. And then yeah. Sam chases after her to say, like, wait, just a second. We're safer here. She was alone with him for a while. And there's a, almost a look on her face where she's like, should I? I could probably do it now, but yeah. you're too quickly Then the car shows up. You know, like they're not alone right. very long before, right. I, before you hear the car rumble. And he's like, oh, look, help has arrived. <laughs> so this was mm. all. A planned. show. Yeah. Because she has these panicky moments like two or three times within this episode. You know, she's super annoying. And yeah, yeah right. We, we hate her. But she did a good job because once she gets in this room alone with Sam, she's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm here. Well, she had a moment earlier where she dropped a vial of blood or something and had yeah. a, a stupid girly moment. And yeah. I was like, why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? But I guess it's because they had to show that maybe she was infected by the dropped blood. I don't know. I think that she was playing this game the whole time. Oh, no, I do, too. I do, too, yeah. which is why I wondered about the the other than to just annoy us and show how right. nervous she was. That she... No, I think they were just trying to really drive the point that she is part of the Help. team. Yeah. Gotcha. The good people versus or the non-infected. That's my opinion anyway. I'm not saying that is that is fact. After Dean shoots Pam dead, you know, Sam like holds out his hand, you know, like, oh, no, help me up. Sarge is like, don't do it. Yeah, don't touch him. He's infected. He's infected. Doesn't say he could be infected. He's like, yeah. he's infected. Yeah. Her blood is on him. Yeah. Dean's like, no, does it doesn't. No, it's, it's Sam. It's my brother. No. And, you know, and Sarge is like, we have to kill him. Yeah. We know that he's infected. We yeah. saw it. We saw yeah. it happen. And that's when, like, Protector Dean comes out. Oh, yeah. And it's, you know, nobody touches my little brother. Uh-huh. You know, if you, you try anything, I will kill you dead before you even drop to the ground. You'll be dead. Yeah. And, and you know. But Dwayne has a good point. Dwayne, the kid, is also there. And he's like, you were going to shoot me. And you had, right. you didn't know. Doesn't matter. It's Sam. <laughs> it's a, I know. But it was a good point he made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But now that it's hit so close to home. You know, that now Sam is Sam's. possibly yep. infected. In fact, more probably infected than, than Dwayne. You know, Dwayne right. just showed Could up bleeding. Right. But Pam definitely bled, bled in into him. Sam. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so Dean did. D, Dean was like, you guys should just go then. He did, I'm not going to kill my brother. Yeah. But I can't tell you guys to stay here and wait for him to turn. Yeah. I'll stay here. You guys go. So he was kind of like protecting Sam from these people who would probably end up trying to kill Sam, you know, as soon as Dean's back was turned. Yeah. This is so you know? important to Dean that he offers them his car, his car. He doesn't even think he just tosses the keys. He doesn't offer it. He's like, take it. Yeah. Take, take my weapons, car. Take all take the, the explosives car. that we made. You should be Thanks. good now. Just, just go. Just go. Yep. And Sam is like, just leave me my gun. So yeah. Sam's talking about killing himself mm-hmm. to, you know, cause he's like, I don't want to turn. I, I will not turn, yeah. you know, leave me a gun. I'll take care of it. Dean, you need to go save yourself. Yeah. And Dean says, no, it's a very zombie moment. A zo- like a zombie movie uh, <laughs> to do. <laughs> if someone gets right. bitten, there's always a period of time where between normalcy Infection and when they and turn. Zombie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And someone's like, yes. oh, I'm not going to do it. I'll shoot myself. Yes, yeah, so you got it. They, but they also get have time to say their goodbyes, yeah, you know, yeah. before they turn. Although it was funny that the, <laughs> before they leave, the doctor says, Thank you, marshals, or something. And Dean's like, uh, We're not really marshals. And her yeah. only response is, Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, which was perfect because, like, yeah. given everything she's experienced that day, she's like, Yeah, all right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how does this affect me? It doesn't, no. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And it's like, all things considered, that was a great response. (laughs) Sam and Dean are alone and they have what I call honest moments. Yeah. And they have this a lot actually in the series, Mm -hmm. you know, they, they have their heart to hearts, um, not as in, we need to talk about this, but they have their moments of 
uh, just going to put all this aside and we have to talk yeah. type of thing. Sam, Sam is again saying, just go, you know, this is your chance to keep going without me type of mm-hmm. thing. And, and Dean admits, he's like, what if I don't want to do this anymore? Yeah. You know, I'm tired. I'm tired of living this life. I'm tired of the job. Um, and, you know, I'm tired of this burden, this weight that's on me. Mm-hmm. And Sam says, you mean dad? And Dean says, it's not all about dad. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, not all about the, I'm assuming this new revelation that the dad has made a deal with the devil, you know, which caused right. his demise and then the, the saving Dean's life in the process. Right. So he's like, and, that's uh, part of it, but that's definitely not all of it. Of it. And Sam's like, well, then what, you know, what is it? Yeah. And just then, you know, mm-hmm. before he can answer, there's, there's a knock on the door to, yeah. you know, not a knock, but like bang, bang, bang. Yeah. It's like doc comes in and she's like, uh, guys, you guys really you <laughs> yeah. need to see this outside. Yeah. They go outside. And nobody, nothing, nothing, nobody, no sign of life, nothing nothing just like fog <laughs> you yeah. know a mist rising yeah you know and it's yeah. there's there's no buddy no animals no nothing just a close up shot of again the word croato and scratched into the electrical <laughs> pole <laughs> dun 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 <laughs> yes so it turns out uh the doc is able to look at sam's blood and he's not infected yes 5 hours later he is yeah, not infected that- but I'm just going to compare it one more time to the other blood samples. And mm-hmm. when she looks at the other blood samples, suddenly they don't have any trace of the virus in the samples. Not only not the virus, but there's no sulfur either. Like their blood is all normal. Yeah. Like nothing ever happened. So Dwayne and Sarge are packing up a truck to head out of town, go somewhere. Uh, Doc decides to stay behind to go to the town sidewinder, uh, sidewinder 40 miles <laughs> away to get the authorities you know she assures dean no sam is completely fine yeah which i thought was kind of ballsy honestly i mean i guess i'm not an infectious disease expert but mm-hmm. considering that everybody had a disease that she'd never seen before a virus she'd never seen before how yeah. she can possibly say with authority yeah oh, he'll be that fine. He's fine. <laughs> yeah he's fine i mean i i know it's been you know she was able to at least find for, anyway I just thought that was. I have thoughts about that, but I'm going to get to that when we wrap up. Okay. So yeah, she assures Dean that Sam is fine, which then leads to a slew of questions. Of course, they're like, right. "What? Okay, what the hell what was just this? Happened? Where did everybody go? Why here? Yeah. Why now? Why am I immune? Right. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Yeah, and Dean As even stated says, by the license plate. <laughs> right. <laughs> WTF. Right. <laughs> And Dean's like, I feel like this is the one that got away. It's like they may have like come through this thing alive, yeah. but they didn't solve the mystery. They didn't kill the demon or shoot the ghost or whatever. Yeah. This isn't over. Right. Cut to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, Dwayne and uh, the Sarge driving in the truck and Dwayne's like, can you pull over? You know, uh, I, I assume uh, the Sarge thought he needed to tinkle or something. Yeah. With the minute Dwayne said oh can you pull over to the side here i was like oh no no and i was like damn it (laughs) because even though i didn't remember remember i didn't remember this episode i didn't really remember who the bad guy was but the minute Dwayne said can you pull over to the side here yep oh dear oh no don't do it yes and he he does pulls over and you know Dwayne's like i gotta make a call and the sergeant's like there's no service here you know (laughs) Dwayne whips yeah, yeah. out the old neck slicing slicer dicer yeah. and <laughs> slices, slices, poor Sarge yeah. grabs his little bowl of blood juice, yeah, his catcher goblet, blood goblet, and proceeds <laughs> to make a call to the deep, you know, to yellow eyes. Yes. And basically wraps everything up by saying, yeah. you know, it's, it's done. Uh, no, Dean never, I mean, Sam never did get infected. The experiment is over. We don't have to keep doing this. Mm-hmm. And yes, there's nothing left behind. Yeah. And black eyes. Yes. Oh, yes. And he, he is definitely a demon because he has you know, the black, black eyes at the end of it. Mm-hmm. I said he makes a Meg call. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and yeah, so the test is complete. Sam is immune. That's the mm-hmm. basic uh, 
answer to the test. Yes. And uh, and I thought that was the end of the episode. Yeah, because it did kind of the music and the the blackout did yeah. suggest, okay, end of episode, time yep. for credits. And, oh, and I almost pressed pause to just like, you know, write my wrap up uh-huh. and I and I didn't. I was like, oh, it's still going. Yeah, it was almost like a little scene, Easter egg type of situation. Yeah. Yeah. So like this next scene is like this idyllic nature. You're like birds are chirping, the grass is green, they're by a lake that's shimmering, their are leaves yes. falling from the trees. A crisp autumn day. Uh, they're having a beer, even yeah. though they haven't slept all night. They're <laughs> going to have a beer before they beer. go drive off. <laughs> but it's like all this pinky punky music yeah. and they're leaning up against a white picket fence, it looks like. But I mean, it's it just was a, a brown. Fence. Oh, was it brown? Yeah, oh, I think maybe it was like I just... a brown log fence. Type oh, of. wow. Not even a white picket <laughs> fence. Okay. And so they're just chatting, sort mm-hmm. of. And Dean comes up with, I think we should take a break, you know, from, from all of this, from hunting. Let's just go to the Grand Canyon. You know, all this driving we do from, you know, hunting and killing. I've never seen the Grand Canyon. Let's go to the Grand Canyon. You know, it yeah. sounds like, what, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, let's have a little vacation. And it's just like, this is, okay, what's, what the hell is going on here? And, and Dean actually does have a moment where he's like, I can't, you know, I can't, I, I made a promise. I can't. Yeah, he tries to just walk away from the conversation. Yeah, and Sam's like, I'm just going to keep asking you. Yeah, he yeah. like, was like, no, 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 no. You're my brother. Whatever weight you're carrying, let me help you. Yeah, and I can't because I made a promise. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, Dad, Dean actually admits, he's like, Dad, um, Dad told me something about you. And and Sam says, you know, what? What did, what did Dad tell you? Mm-hmm blackout <laughs> yeah <laughs> and credits and i wrote down damn it i was like son of a no. bitch i mean i knew it was going to end that way obviously yeah because they want you to but i still was like damn it so close mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so close so it, this was a kind of a a weird but meaty episode like yeah. you said well that that escalated fast <laughs> yes it did yeah. <laughs> but you know we learned something about dean you know he can actually step back and not be a killing machine. Right. And of course he should have, that's the thing. He should have killed uh, Dwayne. I know. Knowing what we know now, but they of course don't know that. They probably will never know that. We learned a little bit more about Sam and we almost learned the secret before we were cut off. It was a good cliffhanger episode that absolutely makes me go want to go like, (gasps) I just want to take a peek. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't do that this time. I, I did not I take almost a peek. Did. I almost did. I almost let it go. <laughs> and it was right before Dean actually said what it was that I pressed pause. I was like, okay, no, 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 <laughs> nope. I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair. So I, it was really interesting watching this episode after experiencing a pandemic for the past two years. Oh. Uh... And I think that's why you thought, you know, why you were so judgy about the doctor. Gotcha. Being, you know, so sure. Yeah. Because we've experienced like, oh my, you know, they make a statement about, you know, La Corona. Yep. And then like two weeks later, it's like, oh, wait, never mind. Yeah. We learned this new thing. And it's been like a continue of the two years it's been this way. Right. Where they're constantly learning new things. Right. Yeah. And it's not that they're wrong. Is that, like you said, they learn new things. Yeah. And they're giving us the information, even if it's changed, which, yes, which is why I was like, how can somebody who yeah. doesn't know anything about a disease just say he'll be fine? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. yes, I think you are right. I could possibly be projecting. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I also thought, I don't know, it was just weird. Now, you know, you, I have a different lens watching this episode than I did of course like the first few times that I've seen yeah. it so this is the first time I've seen Croatoan having been through a pandemic and who would have known you know <laughs> did they mention pandemic in this episode no did they, they mentioned, mentioned the Spanish flu no 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 they mentioned quarantine 
They talk about viral infection. I don't recall. Okay. Maybe it was something else I watched today that mentioned uh, the Spanish flu. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, <laughs> I was watching Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was <laughs> and they mentioned oh the, the spanish flu that killed 20 million people yeah yeah but they did mention quarantine you know they do mention viral infection they yeah you know hint at how easily it can be spread yeah i they, that was the other thing when they when they finally said this is a virus when they kept saying that i was like you guys are speaking very close to each other just because <laughs> yeah, our current right, our yeah. current pandemic is you know airborne, airborne as opposed to um only virus i mean only blood to blood you know yeah transferred so that's i was like step back step back yeah yeah it's, it's weird just because it's our lives yeah. that was fiction yeah and now we're living it yeah i mean but I liked it regardless. I liked this episode. Oh no! I, Although I it did, too. it was kind of, it moved really fast. I think yeah. it was it was like it went from. Well, I keep saying it, like, but it did escalate very quickly. It was just like, okay, people are infected. Well, then we got to kill them. You know, yeah. it was, there was, <laughs> and everyone was okay with that plan. <laughs> you know, <laughs> shall we? We shall. Yes. Yeah, it was. It was interesting because I felt like everything was very compact. You know, yeah. they were stuck in that one town, you know, they couldn't, they, anytime they tried to leave, they were immediately brought back to the, mm-hmm. to the clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they were around the same people the whole time. There, yeah. it, there wasn't a whole lot of shoe leather, you know, there wasn't a lot of driving to get somewhere mm-hmm. or, right. you know, there were no hallways for them to be walking down and getting trapped behind walls. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. It was, um, it was just the one little yeah. office. Yeah. No, it was good. I liked it. It was very dark though. I mean, it Mm -hmm. definitely leaves you, even though it's like this bright, sunny day that they leave you with. It's like so dark (laughs) the way it's left. Yeah. You know, and heavy definitely is propelling the next. Yes. No, probably few episodes. What's uh, what's the next episode? Yes. Speaking of uh, is (laughs) is hunted. Hunted. I wonder who they could be talking about. (laughs) I actually don't know because I I didn't peek at it, so I don't I don't recall. I only I only the, saw uh, the teaser, so I vaguely know what it's probably going oh, to be, but okay. I won't I won't spoil it for you. Okay. Are there are there any noticeable guest stars? Yeah, should I spoil it? Or no, no. Okay, I will just say that we run into a character we have seen before. Okay. Oh, I think I know who it is. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for Croatoan. Not an episode about croutons mm, or Croatia or nope, none of those. Nope, nope. Croatoan. Please make sure that you're following us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anywhere that you listen to podcasts. If you can rate us, please do. We would really appreciate it. It helps out a lot, uh, getting us past all of the celebrity podcasts that just keep popping up everywhere, <laughs> just cranking them out. Oh my god! Jeez. So follow us on all of our social media. We're on Instagram and Facebook at Salt and Burn This Pod. Twitter, we're at Salt and Burn This. So make sure and follow us there. Engage with us, like our stuff. We might be getting some fun merch out there in the coming future. Yes, yes. We'll Just as a teaser. Mm-hmm. And that's going to wrap it up. So please join us next week for episode 10, Hunted. Hunted. I can't wait. I know, me neither. So we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.